Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beers, Wines and Spirits beer chat. So today I'm going to be drinking and chatting. Shepherd Neem's 1698 and Abbot Ale Reserve, the 6.5% version, not the 5% version. So let's dive in. So you see Auburn. You smell roasted fruit and hoppy, and you taste rich, fruity, and uh, warming. And that's 16.98. So, it's firework night number 10, I think it is. Good evening. And there we go, 16.98. One of the best beers in British supermarkets, it's got to be said. And Shepherd Neem might have a bad rep for some people, but this is one of their quality beers. This and their Christmas Ale is uh, an amazing beer. And I've not had it for a few years. And I really do want to um, get a case of it, but I'm not paying their price. It's like 36 quid for a case. Good evening. 16.98. Oh, 6.5%. Can't fault it. Nice dark beer, good strength. It's got that typical, you know, strong fruity flavor aroma to it. Good evening. Sixteen ninety eight up first. Is anybody watching the news with this? With the, what's going off in America with the elections? I mean, President Trump comes out with some shit, but oh my God, he's, uh, he's, he sounds like he's fucking lost the plot, where he's claiming that the election's fraud, because he's not winning, it's all fraud, the voting's all rigged and all that, and you think, Jesus Christ, you know, be the better man and accept. Yeah, I've had to drop a cake off for her, she done a, a cake, and uh, it's a cake, where they have a plastic box inside the cake, dead weird. And you pull this thing, good evening. You pull this, you get this birthday thing, you pull it out and you have money in in these sleeves. And basically the little lad's gonna pull it out and she's got a hundred pound for him. What a very lucky lad. And he's only about four years old as well. Yeah, I was surprised I didn't get a red card last night. So, so I, I reviewed this last night, the old uh, church, 15%, and I drank the bottle. And uh, I went up the house, fell asleep early, but I still didn't get a bollock in. And then I checked downstairs, then came back down to the shed and just finished the last bit off. That was about 12 o'clock, so I fell asleep early and woke up. But I'm on furlough now, part furlough, so I'm at work two days a week and off the three days a week. But great, it is the weekend, caught 40 there. Yeah, Trump, fucking hell. It's embarrassing. The thing is, though, what he's doing in America, no wonder all the all the shops have sh uh, boarded up, because you know there's going to be riots. He's stirring up his supporters to cause riots over there. I mean, um, how long does it take to count the flipping um, votes? I think he had it all planned from the beginning. If he didn't win, he was going to stir the shit. Back in work after seven months. Oh, bless you. At least you've still got a job. That's about the only thing you can say about that. Yeah. You know, I wish that um, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, would have took over the presidency of the United States. Or at least gone for it. He would have brought the black people in line. He would have brought the youth and he's got charisma. I mean, he's got some charisma. And uh, you can just imagine him, you know, saying he's going to smack the candy asses of any terrorists. You know, it'd be ever so funny. But he would make a great prime minister. Uh, president, rather. I mean, we've got our own Trump ever here, Boris Johnson. But then again, I want that to be the prime minister of any country with coronavirus. Because whatever you do, you're fucked if you don't. You're fucked if you do. And you're fucked if you don't. You know. So you can understand with the tier system what it was trying to do, but it wasn't bringing down... And uh, in this country, it's the fucking students that fucked us up. 
Trump is it's funny because he does come out with some stru stuff that's proper straight down in the middle and it's like you know and you can't fault him for slagging people off but oh dear um we're on a massive spring clean of the house i've been spring cleaning today you know wiping down skirting boards and the toilet oh i don't like wiping the toilet down but the my lad pisses on the floor it's not the nicest of jobs and uh, it's a good thing it's a <laughs> i'd make a fucking great prime minister but i'd be that old-fashioned prime minister where i'd be upsetting people but i won't be bullshitting that trump does some of trump says is, is good and some, like this thing where it's all rigged, the election. Thing is, he's tried, they've tried to go to court and get things stopped. And the Supreme Judges in each state have, have basically fobbed him off and said, no, there's nothing wrong with it. It's going to be interesting in the next few days to see what happens. It's not good for democracy, though, is it? So these these have these have been at room temperature in the house. The taste and the, you know the darker beers taste so much better at room temperature. I mean I've got the most poxy fire. Me gas gas fires on um, the bottle man. I ain't gone I ain't gone to fetch one yet. So I've got this little radiator. Fucking useless. It's been on for an hour and a half. It's hardly took the chill off. I might stick it on my chest and try and keep warm that way. And today I was uh, I got home today. Well, just coming out the door, and someone come with a parcel. And it says, a, "Oh, I've got a parcel for you." I thought, "God, that advent calendar came quick." So I've ordered the advent calendar from Low Cost Beers. Forty five quid. God knows what's in it. Doesn't really matter, really. So, or, you know, it's, hopefully it's all going to be stuff that's pretty new to me. And uh, and it wasn't the advent calendar. It was this. Oh, you bleeder! Twenty four bottles of Singtao. Uh, alcohol free now when they said they were going to I won a competition on Facebook um, I don't know what it was about I think you just entered and they picked 20 names or so many out of the app and uh, I wasn't expecting the 24 bottles of it I searched earlier on my phone I couldn't even find any, any, any Google representations of it on the internet then I went on the computer and it's now saying it so maybe um, they've quickly gone to put it on, on the internet, but it wasn't on this morning when I looked, because I wanted to try and get a, a description so I could just work out, you know, a, get a bit of background info. Yeah, it's bound to be the first YouTube in, in bit of review. I think it is anyway. I'm already on page one of Google for it, so it's good to get in there, isn't it, you know. And joking aside, it actually it does taste nice. I'm going to give the 23 bottles there to the wife. She can have it for Shandy's. She won't mind. It, uh, she'll put a, bit, a, a dab of lemonade in and I, I have it for Shandy's. Keeps her quiet. There's a method in the madness. So I'm tempted to buy the uh, Adventure Beer calendar. Um, <clears throat> the bloke from Adventure Beers, he's come around yesterday, bought me some newbies, this one, and uh, oh, I've took the other four into the house. And he was saying that they're going to put a load of Christmas beers in it. And I love Christmas beers. So 75 quid, I might have to try and get that before they run out of stock. It'd be just my thing. When I've got the spare cash to get it, and I had the spare cash, but I've used it on other things. And uh, I bet it's gone before I get the bugger. But there you go, you can't win them all, can you? You see these advent calendars on the internet. Tiny Rebel did one the other week. And they posted it. And a few hours later, out of stock, they'd sold out, which begs the question, if it's two months to Christmas, why the bloody hell didn't they put more? Oh, I don't know. Shouldn't be moving. No, it's probably just your eyes. I mean, how much you had to drink? <laughs> It, do, it does make you wonder, you know, there's some, if you as a conspiracy theorist. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That up there, that is moving, yeah. Yeah, 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 it is moving. The floor's a little bit bouncy in this part of the shed. 
Um, if you was a conspiracy theorist, you'd be thinking that the governments of the world have conspired to get rid of the older generation and people who are ill. Because look how many people have died. If you was a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, it is, it is shaking. God, you're good ass at it. Yeah, it's vodka. It does say 60% vodka on the, on the bottle, but it's not. It's 40%. Ooh. So, yeah, I think I was saying before anybody else came on. Uh, Shepherd Neem, I've got their Christmas ale out on the website. But 12 bottles. I mean, I, I like I like beers, but I don't want to be buying. Good evening. Uh, 16 98 first. I don't mind buying beers, but I don't want to be buying cases. Because, obviously, I ain't got loads of money to, you know, spend on beers. It's bad enough as it is. Homemade vodka. Yeah. It's a bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually something a mate gave me. Uh, some of what you can make yourself like. But uh, I've done some of that 24% homemade vodka before. It don't taste nice. It, uh, it's got a rancid off taste to it. Um, you know, it's more, more fermented um, vodka rather than distilled. Because with distilled, you can go up to 95%. With fermented, you can only go as far as about 24%. Good evening. I thought I was going to be on at six o'clock tonight. Then the wife sprung the odour. Oh, we've got to go out to drop a cake off. And then went to got the Chinese, like the nice Chinese. King porn and mushrooms. Jobs are good. And that uh, two day week, full pay. Oh, I'll tell you what, this furlough in some ways, it's a cracker, isn't it? As long as you know you've got a job to go back to. It's, I mean, I've told some of my mates and they're gutted. They're saying, Fucking hell, I wish they'd furlough me. And other people moaning because they've furloughed. Blackcurrant juice wine. Ooh. Sometimes, you know, I find with this, with home brewing, she does drive, but she's had to hold the cake to stop, um, you know, to stop the cake moving around in the car. So sometimes I find with home brew... Oh, God, I couldn't do any... That 67% job I reviewed was enough, you know. There's only so much you, some of that. Just, yeah, furlough. Whew. I'm actually looking forward from that. I mean, obviously, we're in the shit time of the year now. November to February is the crap time. Can you imagine if they keep us in lockdown till February and I'm stuck on two-day week? Bless you. <laughs> I know you shouldn't laugh really, but it's... Uh, Was they? I've been to Little today. Uh, they had remnants of that beer festival from the other week, but nothing interesting. Yeah, and with 80% pay, you're paying less tax, less insurance, and you're not paying loads of petrol. I mean, as of now, I know that I'm only doing two days a week till December the 2nd. And then after that, who knows? Will they keep us locked down? I mean, if you look at it from 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 a, a financial point of view, they want it open, but the idiots these at the moment they're not people on taking no notice. In Nottingham, um, their fines being handled handed out. I don't know if it's the same in other parts of the country. Ten thousand pound fines for parties. Fucking hell, who's got ten thousand pound? I'm knocking about. And other people are getting two hundred pound fines just for standing in a park together. Still got all your, all your holidays. Can't fault that, can you? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm furloughed to the second. Good evening. And then I go back to work for two weeks. And then I've got my holidays two weeks off for Christmas. So, um, fucking hell, it's brilliant. It means we can get the house cleaned, get all the Christmas decorations up. And just have a nice chill time all the way up till Christmas. Brew some beer, drink some beer. And... Uh, be happy about it. I think sixteen ninety eight uh, from Shepherd Name, obviously. It does make you wonder. The consp you know, the conspiracy theories. It does make you wonder what's going off. It's funny how in China there's, there's hardly out going off. But Christmas Ale is pretty close to this Shepherd Name. Uh, to this 
Hello, hello. And I'm trying to think what other uh, Shepherd Neem beers are close. I've also bought, I've also got tonight, the Abbott Ale. Reserve, 6.5%, the better version of Abbott, if I'm being honest. I like the 5%, but... Yes, I, I need to get that. I went, I went in m &S the other week, and I have reviewed it before. Yeah, I have reviewed it before, but obviously, in them days of the channel, not many people were watching the videos, so I'm going to have to try and do it again. For bitters, oof. I would start on John Smith's. Extra smooth, stuff like that, Guinness. I won't go on to the craft beer straight away. I'd always start on best bitters. Caffrey's, Tetley's, King Goblin's, fucking beautiful. <clears throat> So, with the juice wine, depends what juice you like. I'd go for it, if you like a rosé, cherry juice wine. So, get four cartons of cherry juice, four bags of sugar, yeast. It's the cheapest way of doing it. The cherry juice wine, buy Sainsbury's cherry juice as well. Don't get the, there's some shit ones out there. And that will make you 23 litres. And I'll tell you what, the cherry juice wine was probably the best wine that I've done from juice. And I haven't replicated it since. But there's some fantastic juice wine juices, you know, um, juices out there. Just keep a um, watch out for the preservatives. Uh, most of the normal ones made from concentrate are OK. Some aren't. Some, some of them you have to boil it up. But that. Only some of them, though, because it's otherwise it, the preservative or whatever it is kills the yeast. And uh, yeah, you have to be careful of that. I bottled up that American oak the other night. Tell you what, for a beer kit, it's sat in there. And, uh, yeah. And yeast, obviously. Get some, get yeast renewed. If, you, if, you, if you're on a budget, just get normal yeast. Uh, you know, wine yeast. But if you can, get yeast with nutrient. Because it all helps it, you know. Keep it in a warm place. Don't put it out in the bed. You know, don't put it out in the shed. It ain't gonna. It's got to be above twenty degrees. The airing cupboard's probably a good place. But for God's sakes, make sure you've got a fermenter with space at the top because when it bubbles, you don't want fucking juice all over your all over your airing cupboard. Because I dare say the wife won't be happy or your partner. You know, fuck juice wine. <laughs> Not touching that stuff. I've still got four bottles down there. Yeah, but that's the American oak aged rum. And it's already starting to swell up now, even though it's in the bit shed. And uh, looking forward to it nearer Christmas. About a month's time, I'm going to crack open the first bottle. And for 25, 24 quid. Brilliant, you know. It, it, the taste of it's amazing. Truly one of the top three beer kits I've ever bought. It's got a sort of lovely twang to it. They wrote that rum part, but it does really shine through. It's uh, interesting to see how it comes out, that's for sure. Anyway, going down nicely. Yes, I put that on the front of the channel earlier. I opened it up and it just fucking blew. It was everywhere. It was up the walls. The... And it was all over my TV. And obviously, beer and TVs don't mix. If you don't get it to the front of the TV, before it goes down the front of the TV, into the group, you know, where the TV goes down, obviously that's not sealed. So if you don't get it before it goes down there. I've got a lid on one of my fermenting and uh, the it split a little bit as well. And it still ferments it. Best thing to do is a bit of gaffer tape or sellotape if you can. Just to make sure to stop the bubbles going through. You know, cleanly, cleanliness is godliness with own brewing. I mean, I've only ever brewed one dodgy brew in apart from prune juice wine but that wasn't dodgy that's just how it came out um i had one stout i brewed oh god about 10 years ago now and that came out dodgy low cost beers are amazing i, I really do like them them and um gorilla tape will sort it them are the, an adventure beer around the corner from me 
sound sound uh, companies. I was tempted to buy the Audi wine advent calendar. Oh, I fucking know Forrest is going to win this week. Problem is with Forrest, and I reckon it's the owners. I don't think Sabri Lamucci chose to buy all them new players. I think the owners bought a load of new players. And you imagine chucking 11 of us in the team. If we've never played together before, you might be 11 great players. But if you haven't played together before, you're going to struggle. And I think that's what's happened at Forest. They've struggled because they've not played together. And like everything, it takes time. You work in your, in your job. When you're working with somebody who you've been mates with for years, you've got each other's backs. You know exactly what they're going to do. And obviously it's the same with the football. You know, you know what they can do, what they can't do. And uh, that's where Forrest, hopefully, you know, will start to ignite. I mean, with the team they've brought in, you know, we should be right back at the top. Leia Kate was amazing. Uh, Brewdog slapping some beers out at the moment. See, I suffer with stress. And I still do now. You know, I can't shake bastards. And... Uh, I'm surprised at how many of my old friends are on stress tablets. And, and I think with coronavirus, it, it's, it's made it even worse for a lot of people. Well, it would do. A lot of people are very worried about losing their homes, you know. Brewdog, no, sorry, Audi brought out a beer called Anti-Establishment and it looked like a punk IPA. Didn't taste like it. And that got a Brewdog, uh, there was a bit of a spat on Twitter. And then all of a sudden, Brewdog called Audi out and says, let's make a collaboration beer. So they did. And that's where that old beer came from. It's no special. Yeah. Some of Brewdog stuff is amazing, but that wasn't no special. You know, it was okay. It, it, it wasn't like, a, say, layer cake, for instance. That was lovely. Yeah, that's uh, that was own bargains last night. The, the only beer I could pick up. What worth doing a beer haul for one bloody beer? But yeah, own bargains, one pound twenty nine. I missed those last few comments. I'll wait for them to come back up again. Sure they will. Oh, I do love my ginger beers. Crabbies had the best ginger beer in the world. Mal um, Crabbies Black, six percent oak aged ginger beer. Amazing. And the twats got rid of it. So, and I keep badgering them to bring it back in, but they're not having it, which is sad. Then they bought that orange flavoured ginger beer out, which was lovely as well. And also a citrus ginger beer, and that was lovely. And they've all disappeared and not coming back. It's a shame. It's a shame when we lose beers. That's not a bad price from Simon. Crabby's also used to do Crabby's Mac. So obviously that's ginger wine with whiskey. Uh, only about 18%, but lovely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love... Um, so Simply Ginger Beer, Simply Ginger Beer, do a kit. And if you do that kit, use twice as, or twice or three times as much sugar. So instead of a kilo, do three kilos. Do a ginger root, get ginger root, chop it up, mash it, add that, and you'll get a really good ginger beer. I missed that bit then. Oh, you know. Alska poached pear and spiced rhubarb cider from Alde. Oh. Abbott Reserve is nice. Yeah, Broadside, King Goblin, all lovely beers. <clears throat> Brutal Bottle, Short Life Deals. Oh, I'll have to try and remember that later. This is weird. Having these chats are great because obviously we don't all, not all of us go to shops and supermarkets or certain websites. So by listening to what each other are saying, it's a great way of um, trying to get yourself some bargains. Right, fucking chat's gone off again. 
I've just spent all my spare money that I had. I had a little money earner coming. I've, I've spent it. So spent it on meat for Christmas of all things. Fucking old winter beer. The Christmas beer as well. Oh, Christmas ale from St. Peter's. Amazing. And uh, if you if, if you have bought you the uh, ultimate mix box, one of each, you'll love that box. There's some absolute perlers in there. I mean, there's, there's a bit of standard stuff as well, but there's some perlers amongst them beers. Uh, St. Peter's do do some decent beers. Oh, yeah. I'm just gutted that, where is it? That Sadler's Christmas Pudding Stout's at 4.5%. Fucking gutted. One of my top five beers, and they've dropped the ABV. And it can only be for, for from a, a VAT or, you know, or whatever they put on beers, duty. That can only be the reason why they've done it, because it's been at 6% for years. Ooh. Yeah, fucking beer duty. Problem is that it's the same price as it was at um, 6%. And you're going to B&M on the, on the ticket, when they printed off the ticket, it says 6% on the ticket. Because I looked and thought, fucking hell, you can actually be prosecuted for that. It's false advertising. Obviously, not that I'd say, hope, but, you know, there used to be a thing where you get like thousands of pounds fine for, for, for that. Yeah, I always wondered why fruit ciders were all 4%. Because 4%, let's be fair, you can't get pissed on a fruit cider at 4%. It ain't happening. You know, you need at least 6% on a fruit cider. Still an absolute classic. You get them... Christmas pudding vibes that you get with with the likes of um you know the saddlers one well that you used to get at least. Right, on to the next pair. I bet Ale Reserve or Tesco. God I love Tesco because these two are only available in Tesco's as far as I remember. I went into my local co-op tonight. Some their range, it depends on which co-op you go into, because some are alright and some have got a quite a crappy range. But they've got some nice local beers. And I wonder if this, it's the same around the country where co-ops do local beers from, lo you know, the regions around the country. Because in Nottingham, we get beers from Nottinghamshire in our co-op. 20 different beers, depending on where you're going. Four for six quid. You can understand why, you know, these beers sell so well. I mean, we all we all like the craft stuff, but when it's at eight nine pound and going up a bottle, it's not cheap. And you know, if you want a budget, Woggle Dance. Yes, I've had that. Um, oh, only a while ago. Oh, oh, I do like that. This is nice. Can't beat steaks and chips for four quid, can you? Two steaks. I've been buying steaks for Christmas. We, we, twats. Uh, we normally do steaks on Boxing Day. So we'll have a normal Christmas dinner on Christmas Day. Obviously, or we're going to have families around this year. And you don't, do you? Because if you're getting £200 fine, you've fucked it. I'm not getting £10,000 fine to have my me, have me, uh, me son and my daughter-in-law, uh, daughter and son-in-law around the house. So it's going to be a very interesting Christmas. But I can see it's been in lockdown for New Year. See, some own brew all depends on the temperature. If you if you if you got one of them belts, you're laughing because you can keep the temperature a good constant temperature. I mean, I, I've brewed some beer in here before, and it was on a hot summer's day, and in two days it fermented. I couldn't fucking believe it. I come in, it was like a war zone. There was fucking beer everywhere. But in two days, it had fermented. And, 
Never seen it like it. The bubbling was unbelievable. You couldn't sit in it because it just drive you nuts. And I had three, three lots bubbling at the same time. It was uh, like, blub, 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 blub. fucking hell, get me back out of the shed. And I think it was, that was two years ago when it was really warm. That uh, really hot three month spell when it went, when it was a drought, was it two years ago? Yes, 2018. Okay, that's posh, isn't it? I can't get on with hydrometers, I can't. Oh, I won't touch the prune wine. But if you suffer with constipation, and that, to be honest, if you suffer with constipation, prune wine, and you like your drink, prune wine's a, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting concept. Fucking hell, they are world-class beers, aren't they? For £5.40. Yeah, I can't use hydrometers. And I used to be really, really good at maths at school. I got a grade A-O level. But um, I still can't get over the fucking putting it in and measuring this and measuring that. I suppose if I was actually showing it once, I'd get it straight away. But I can't be bothered. I did stick it in the pier wine. And at the top, where it, where it says it's ready to bottle, well, it was nowhere near that. It was way down. And then I decided where I brewed the orange juice wine to actually pour the pear wine into the leftover yeast and sediment from the orange juice wine. And uh, in the end, it bubbled away like a swine. And it turned out to be quite a nice pear wine. And it's obviously it's got an age now. No, I don't smoke anything. Never have in my life. Don't need to drink enough. Fucking nosy bastard. Oh. So Trump reminds me of uh, Deontay Wilder. Uh, some of the excuses he's pulled for that last match. I know. It's only two doors away. At the back of us, two doors away. No, I've not tried to young super wine yeast. I have tried champagne yeast before in a wine. Me, I'm a steak fan. I love ribeye steak. Ribeye steak with Stilton over the top. And whenever I go out, I'll have steak. I like mussels and that. I made the mistake one that went to... Good evening. I went to a French restaurant. And all, the, all my friends, they all had steak. And I thought, I've seen this seafood. Wilco's is decent. Uh, I, I used to drink at 16. But I used to go smashing out up afterwards. But was all cans. Forgot where I am now. Fucking nice drink for you. Forget what you're talking about. Oh, cheers. Yeah, a little do some. Can't stop people coming on watching YouTube videos. They're, they're not for, you know, they're not... Um, obviously, if someone was swearing, then you shouldn't really be on, but... Bottles or cans, better taste. Years ago, bottles always run over cans. And in fact, when I left Sainsbury's in 2015, um, cans were a dying thing. There was hardly any cans, because... Everyone's, you know, the, the general conception was that cans were not as good as bottles. And nowadays, you look at the craft beer stuff, it's all in bloody cans. So that kind of blew the, the, the it's better in bottles out of the water. No, you don't really get a melt taste. Not these days, you know. That might have been an issue years ago with the older stuff, but... No, I mean, cans, cans now fetch the price. You go into Tesco's with their um, craft stuff, £4.50. 
Yeah, you're right there. Yeah, yeah, because it's so funny. At one stage, uh, there's all the any cans at test Sainsbury's. Now you're going loads. I was into gardening from the age of nine years old, and uh, grew I grew busy lizards, sold them to the shop on Mansfield Road. And I lived two doors away from the Arboretum, which is in Nottingham City Centre. And uh, I knew from the age of 10 I wanted to be a gardener. I was brilliant at computers. And uh, I could have made a lot of money into, in computers, but I always wanted to be a gardener. So at 16, I went to uh, Horticultural College and I've been a gardener all my life, bar five years when I was at Sainsbury's. The oldest beer I've drunk? Shit. I can't remember offhand. Let's see if I can bring that back up again. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I can't remember what's the oldest beer I've had. Good evening. Eight nineteen eighty one. Fucking hell. America's strange at the moment. Yeah, I've had a strange old year. Suffering with anxiety. Um, it's something you can't get rid of. You learn to cope with it. And uh, I wanted to move jobs two years ago. And I've been looking at jobs... Sometimes, you know, looking at jobs is the worst thing you can do. Because you see a job and you think, oh, should I go for it? Then you've got the anxiety of going for it. The anxiety of going for a fucking interview. And sometimes you're already in the best place you need to be. I went for that job last year at Nottingham Park Estate. It turned out to be the fucking job from hell because of certain factors. But in the last three months, you know, I found this job I'm in and I've got an amazing boss. He's as laid back as they come. Very, very clever. Obviously a millionaire. He owns two, you know, multi-million pound hotels. And uh, he's letting me run, use my own creativity, which is great because it's interesting for him because he's, he's seeing if, I, if I'm living up to what I'm saying I am. And I, obviously, I know what I'm talking about. I've won multiple awards in, in gardening. And, uh, you know, but even even now, I still have anxiety. So you can't fucking get rid of. Although sometimes I don't, drinking too much beer don't help. Especially if you go too much on one night, you know, you think, oh, fuck it, I'll have another half a glass of wine. And that half a glass turns into a pint. And, and yeah, it's not good for you. In some ways, anyway. But for, better, much better than it was four months ago, let's be fair. Shit, will it still be good in 25 years? <sighs> My next homebrew wine will be at Christmas because the wife's bought me um, for a Christmas present for a 79 pound, fucking 79 quid. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't afford myself to buy that, but being it's just a Christmas present, she's bought it for me. And it's an Amarone uh, kit. So if you know Amarone, they are expensive Italian wines. Um, you're looking at 16 quid upwards. And um, a bottle. So this already is going to cost three quid a bottle. I haven't watched any forest this year. Um, I get stressed watching them. So I, I don't watch for the simple reason is I can't be getting stressed. Yeah, we've all got our likes and dislikes with beer, haven't we? Which is what's good about us all, really, because we all like different beers. I mean, I'd buy... I like Christmas beers. I'd buy crates of the stuff, as long as they don't drop the fucking ABV down when, when you go and buy it. Yeah, so it's costing... So the kit's 79 quid, so you basically... Good evening. And uh, so you pay... It's like nearly, nearly enough three quid a bottle before you brew the bloody stuff. So... 
when I brew that, I'm going to have to brew it and be absolutely spot on with the brewing because I daren't fuck it up. Not at 79 quid. And it takes six weeks to brew. Six weeks. And the box is as heavy as fuck. It's 12 litres. I've bought the low-cost beer advent calendar. God knows what's going to come in that. You know the stuff they have. It's so random. Doppio Molto is fucking beautiful. Love it. Brilliant. And I'm also looking at the adventure beer um, Christmas calendar, Christmas advent calendar. Only because he came round my ass last night to drop a, 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 some beers off. And he was telling me some of the beers he's gonna he's trying to get. And they're the mostly all Christmas beers as well. So to get an advent calendar full of Christmas beers is better than a lot of the advent calendars out there that are full of normal beers. Because it's all right, but at Christmas, what do you want to drink? Christmas beers. I certainly do anyway. No, I don't do any more than two fucking calendars because the wife would give me such a fucking arsehole then. You know how it is, you, you can't be winding the wife up. It's, uh, I can only get away with doing two reviews a night, you know, or a sneaky review of Dan. That's why I need to get another gas bottle for the shed. No Halloween beers this year, no. They're all blaming coronavirus, aren't they? They're bollocks, isn't it? The big breweries could have brewed um, Halloween beers. Let's hope next year, once coronavirus has, we've got a vaccine and it goes away, that um, yeah, <laughs> I thought that box today was a fucking advent calendar. I was good to rent. Well, it was all right. Yeah, say what it was. This one, blue bourbon custard. It's basically rhubarb and custard beer. I've had it at the uh, Robin Hood Beer Festival. Really nice. 4.8% uh, pale ale. It's like being in my own sweet shop. I come in the shed and I think, what should I review tonight? Ooh. I've got one in a can. Let me get the can. I'm not going. These are going to the sheds, uh, to the house. There we go. That's the strongest beer I've got. It's from Navigation Brewery. It's 11%. And funnily enough, it's only six quid for the can. That's not bad for an 11% beer. You know how expensive they get. Um, in fact, it's 11.5%. Yes, they do get cold, which is why I'm taking all the darker beers and stouts up to the house and I'm just leaving the pale ales and whatnot down the beer room. They're fine down here. But this sort of thing, because it's a stout, it really needs to be in the warm to get the best flavour out of it. Oh, can't wait to review it as well. Yes, I can see myself getting tanked on that fucker. 10% in the IPA. Oh, bless you. This is like a fridge in here. Even though I've got uh, insulation, plasterboard, it's still, you know, because there's no heat in here, it still gets really cold. Won't deliver to London. Oh, I thought they did national, national delivery. I missed that comment. Let me get that comment back up. 17, 16.8%, 13.7%, Boo Dogs. Ooh. Uh, I thought Adventure would, um, yeah, some of the stuff that you get in the little, you know, the 7% stuff, when you look at what Tesco's charge and you think, fuck now, you know, it is a decent price. I missed that on the Coco Noco. Well, what what little will do? They'll buy a massive amount of bottles and they'll get it for a, a much cheaper price. 
You bought the 67.5% for Christmas Day. Fucking hell. For fuck's sake, don't drink, don't try and neck it all. You'll be ill. <laughs> yeah, you can't fault it. Four, 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 six point five beers for six quid. I'm interested to see what's coming in for Christmas. No, no, I don't. I usually have a, a wine with steak if I'm drinking. You know. A nice Malbec uh, with a steak. Ooh. I wonder why they can't. Because you get brew. You know some of these home brew kits. You can do nine percent beers for less than less than you know about eighty pence a bottle. So it makes you wonder why they can't brew for less than three quid. Malbec is brilliant. Mistake with Stilton, drizzled over the top. Some nice mushrooms cooked in a garlic butter. Oh. Oh. oh, the hops. And it's funny, you know, I went to Cockliffe this year and I'm doing the top of this edge and I think, what the fuck are these things on the edge? And I'm, I'm cutting I'm cutting them and there are hops. There are hops that are grown over from the farmer's side and all grown over into the edge. Shit, I'd have known I'd have picked them up. My brother used to work for a fine dining steak firm um, in Derby somewhere. And he used to get ragu steaks, the proper expensive stuff. And uh, I don't know if he nicked it or fucking, you know, backhanded it. But he used to give us some of them. They were lovely. If I'm still there next year, if I, you know, because you never know. But uh, yeah, I'm keeping my eye on I'll keep my eye on them for next year and find out how to get the, how to, to, you know, take them off and what's the best way of um, storing them. It'd be interesting. Um, but yeah, state-wise, you know, Lidl is one of the best places for steaks. Sainsbury's do some nice steaks, but they're expensive. Lidl for quality is my favourite. Yeah. The, the, uh, I mean, even Tomahawk's expensive for what it is. Yes, I think so. I've heard that somebody's dried them out in an oven. And uh, God knows how. Yeah, I don't think I'd bother. I, I'd rather stick to normal kits if that's the case. Oh, St. Peter's Cream Stout. I had the bottle the other week and it was amazing. I've definitely got to get another kit of it at some stage, but uh, I don't brew too much because the wife will have a dicky at me. I mean, I've got a barrel of rhubarb wine, a barrel of pear juice wine, a barrel of orange juice wine, so that's 40 pints of each. Then all this shit on the back wall. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody, my boss at work the other day was telling me it was on about Guinness and got Guinness in a can and he puts this can on this this thing and it sent an electrical, whether he pours it into the glass already, six o'clock tomorrow, and he, whether he pours it into the glass um, already, but it, this Serga, that's it, and it sends an electrical charge through the fucking glass or something and it makes it like draft or something. And he's on about it. I'm like, what the fuck? What's he on about? Yeah. It's funny the things you know, isn't it? You know, the things you see. 20 quid from brew to bottle, eh? Mm. Oh, you've got to have your beers. You need some sanity in life. But this all this lockdown rubbish going off and the, all on the news. I've just come away from watching uh, Emmerdale Farm for 20 minutes. That killed me. I was eating with Chinese watching Emmerdale Farm. It's like so fucking depressing. And, uh, you know, you need some time to chill out, drink a beer, see what everyone else is drinking. I was given a book last year. And uh, I must bring it down the beer room one day and show you the book. And it's got the seems to be the best beers in the world or best types of beer and it's actually a really good interesting uh, read
To be fair, during the original lockdown, I drank some fucking beers I had. I can't fault you. In fact, I drink, I, I've got to the stage where I was drinking and not eating the thing. I didn't need to eat because the, basically the calories from the beer was keeping me going. But it's a great way to go on, isn't it? Northern Monk Faith. I'm sure I've got that somewhere on this wall. Somewhere. I really need to stop buying beers, but, um, you know, every time you see a new one, you think, oh, I'm having that. <laughs> and uh, I'm hoping that B&M have got some more Christmas beers this week. I really want Shepherd Neem's Christmas Ale, but um, whether I can get hold of it, I don't want to buy a case, unless I'm forced to. What's a subcompact? Oh. I do like Abbot Ale Reserve. True decent beer. And for the price. Oh. Beer machine. All right. See, some of these stuff, you know, it's um, obviously... I'll see what the wife buys me this year. I mean, she bought me an air still for Christmas a couple of years ago. That was nice. Yeah, bar humbug. Now, that was in both Sainsbury's last year. And it normally is in Sainsbury's. And it was in B&M last year. Problem with B&M is, if you see any Christmas beers in B&M, you have to get them as quick as you like, as quick as you can. Because they go out of stock ever so quick. I found that last year. That's why I bought four bottles of Saddlers. Albeit, oh, sure, I hadn't now, because it's not as good as it was. But uh, I'm going to drink it when it's warm and see if it gets better when it's warm. And, uh, you know, you know, with the ABV drop, I maybe was slightly too, too critical. So I'm going to drink it when it's warm and see if it's better when it's warm than it is when I drank it when it was a bit chillier. And uh, see if it's see if it still retains that decent flavour and aroma. Gandalf IPA. I keep trying to talk some of the Nottingham breweries into doing draft beer, like what you get at low cost beer, doing draft beer in bottles because there's so many beers you can't get in bottles, and uh, you know hopefully. They'll all decide to, you know, to do it. But I suppose it's they have to pay duty on every bottle before they've even sold the bottle. Um, I'm sure that's what I read somewhere, which is shit. If, if you haven't sold it, you shouldn't be any duty, surely. I mean, I heard today that Weatherspoons and Green King, before the lockdown ended, were selling all their beer for 99 pence a pint. Which is all right, I suppose, if you want a beer that cheap. And they had that on that Too Good To Go website. They had... Um, They had, uh, what's the name? Oh, fucking hell. Pay a fiver, get 15 quid's worth of beer, which is, you can't fault that, can you? As long as it's decent beer. The only problem is Green King don't do a lot of decent real ales. If you like your lagers, you're laughing, but for real ales, it's a bit bland, the offering. Oh. Truly. Perfect. Can't be can't be being sent free bears, can you? Gandalf IPA, where's that from then? Gandalf IPA. I think they, with King Goblin, they need to make a, a, a special, King Goblin special. And 8%, put it in a 750ml bottle. Oh, true Christmas present potential. Um, do you know, I can't fucking remember where I got it from now. Where the fuck did I buy that from? Was it Morrison's? Might have been Morrison's. Um, 
might have been about 152 quid a bottle. Not not 100%. 5.2%. I mean, I used to really like Tanglefoot years ago. Then I, when I reviewed it last year, or the year before, I didn't really rate it as much, but I can't wait to see this. You can get a toffee cider. Um, Bulldog do a toffee apple cider kit. That's nice. And you could uh, ramp up the sugar to make it stronger. And uh, a couple of extra kilos of sugar in there. Maybe another bit, a bit more yeast and get the ABV up a bit more. Worth a try. You can get essences that you can add to kits, but they're expensive. It's funny, do you find that as you get older and more drink more beer, that session goes from 3.8% to about 6%? I find that. The 3.8%, can't be done with it. But the 6% stuff, I'm like, yeah, this is session strength. Unless it's just alky strength. You never know, do you? Oh. So I found some beers down here the other day and I'm thinking, what the fuck is this? Oh, no, not that one. So as you can see, the bottle's expanded. And you know, I ain't got a, I ain't got a clue what it's in it. Aldi's, Arpa's Toffee Ale is really nice. The, co the, the, the other one, is it the coffee one? Um, it's not, not as good. Oh. I haven't got a clue what that is. It's not wine, anyway. No, it's definitely beer. Yeah, I didn't rate the coffee start as much. Toffee ale, beautiful. Really nice. This might be that um, one from last year that I brewed. The Imperial Red Ale, Bad Cat. Yeah, it's Bad Cat. Fucking hell, it's strong as well. So that's a year old, that is. And uh, nice and clear. And uh, as you can see, the bottle is not uh, supposed to be anywhere near that sort of... Um... <laughs> yeah, it won't prune wine. <laughs> I'll know where the prune wine is. Yeah, I'm not drinking that again. Fucking hell, I'll be ill. Although, to be fair, fucking hell. So we've got toilets at Kellum at Newark. And every time I go, every time I get there in the morning, I need, I need to go to the toilet. Don't know why. Went to the toilet the other day. Fucking did a number two. And it's all sat on the side. A fucking turd sat on the side of the toilet. Flushed it, won't go down. I thought, oh, fuck's sakes. So I went into the kitchen, grabbed a jug, filled it with hot water. The jug imploded in front of me. Cut me hand here. Blood dripping out. The fucking glass is all over. Bastard. Grabbed the metal jug instead. Poured that out of hot water. Went in, poured it down. And, oh. and I reckon, that's you know, it's all beer. But, yeah, that's definitely bad cat. Yeah, I think it was supposed to be for cold water only. So I put hot water in and it, uh, it just imploded. Fucking hell, glass everywhere. <clears throat> I hope they don't count their jugs. Although, if they watch these reviews, they'll know anyway. <laughs> I do apologise. <laughs> I hope you weren't eating your dinner. Should be drinking beer anyway. Much more healthier. But I reckon it was the prune juice wine that maybe did that. Because, oh my God. And I do find that drinking real ales, you, you are in the number two department, you are a bit more through to in the number two department. It 
it's you know it's one of the things that I built in lockdown that I'm so proud of. You know, I used to have them all in in like these uh, IKEA box things, all stuck in this unit. So you didn't know what you know. It was a case of reaching in, just grabbing one out. And then I got a load of pallets from work, and I thought, I'm going to build a wall. You know, a shelving unit for the bays. And uh, it's it's worked out really good. Although I'm, I'm actually having to double stack beers now because I've got that many fucking beers. And I really need to calm down buying beers. But even at Christmas, I'm going to get loads of beers because I know what the wife's got me. Well, some of it anyway. And uh, we always go silly on each other at Christmas. I've spent probably 400 quid on her for Christmas. And uh, she's probably spent about 300 on me knowing her, you know. We're all like big kids. We treat each other as... It is a hobby, you know. Every time I go to a shop and see a new beer, I have to have it. I have to buy a new beer. And uh, which is why half the time I try not to go to new shops because I'll end up buying it. I know I will. And especially at this time of the year. Yeah, it just gets expensive, doesn't it? Obviously, if you've only got so much money coming in. I mean, if I wasn't doing gardens at the weekend, I wouldn't be buying any hardly any beers, you know. But it's only because I've been doing gardening. Lovely. <laughs> that I've managed to build up a good stockpile of beers. I mean... I've probably got at least 400 beers now in beers, wines, lagers, whatever. Yeah, buying directs it good for if you can get some good deals. Green King on their website, if you choose to buy their mixed case, you can get one of each, you can get 12 beers. And there was 12 beers on there that I'd never had for Christmas. I agree, you know. Green King, I think I think I got one. It came to twenty seven quid, but they want to accept PayPal, so I said, "Oh, fuck that!" And uh, I had to get the credit card out, so I had to speak to the wife, and that means she'll know what I'm buying. But um, I'll definitely have to go go for it. Yeah, on their website, Green King, they've got oh, fucking hell, what their Christmas beer? I can't remember what it's called now. But they've got a load of Bell Haven beers as well, some really nice beers. Sadly, Hen's Tooth isn't on there anymore. Home bargains. Um one pound twenty nine last night. Rocky Rudolph, yes, that's it. I knew somebody had know. Old Bob. I had that before last year sometime. McEwen's champion. £1.49 at um, Tesco's today. You want on the four for £6 deal. I do love ginger beers. I really do. Oh, that's gone down nicely. Good strength as well. Might have to have a bit more. I better not be too long because the wife will give me a kicking. My home bargains didn't have the apple spice. That's one reason I went there last night. I I offered it for the wife, and I thought, Hoopers, it'll be at home bargains. I went in, no bloody it. And my daughter's been in today at a different home bargains in Hena, in Derbyshire, and none there either. No, I've not had any from that brewery. There's breweries all around the country, isn't there? You, you know, you could go on a... Simply Ginger Beer Kit is the best ginger beer kit on in the market. Don't, for fuck's sake, don't buy Coopers. Because Coopers, the ginger beer comes out cloudy all the time. And that's if even if the yeast works. I've done three of their kits and every time I had issues with it. And I know how to brew. And yet I did Simply Ginger Beer and never had no issues. I've done it two or three times, made some lovely beer. I'm half tempted to buy 
when I'm flush, flush with cash, but I simply ginger bake it, by the simply the stout that they do, brew them together, do a tw as a 25 litre brew, so you're getting two lots, and um, getting a sh making a, a, a strong ginger stout. <sighs> I use the normal, with the yeast that comes with it. I missed that last comment. Ah. Yes, I have tried 19 crimes. Drank it the other week. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, Cooper's kits are shit. Absolutely shit. Uh, I nearly wasted the ginger, ginger beer once, and uh, I got some more yeast, different yeast, poured that in, and, and then it fermented. But yeah, Cooper's are crap. Never, never touch them again, unless I buy some different yeast to go with the, the, you know, the malt that you get in the kit. Jam shed. I'm sure I've had jam shed before as well. Oop. Missed that bit. I think some of the, oh God, get off the screen. Some of these kits are all right. You know, I, I think Wilco's kits are brilliant if you want to use it as a core kit. So you get the Wilco's kit and you do things with it. Say you get a the stout kit and you get a load of plum essence and add the plum essence to it. Yellowtail are absolutely unbelievable bit wines. Um, there's not a single wine they do what isn't nice. Yeah, Wilco's. I'm thinking of doing a ginger IPA from Wilco. Like an obgob, um, when Krabby's did their Krabby's IPA. And it was Krabby's with Obgoblin IPA to make a Krabby's IPA. Beautiful. Mangrove kits are okay. But you know with the hops, if you ever get one and you've got to add the hops, get a pair of tights, buy a pair of tights, stockings, whatever. Put the hops in the fucking stockings. Tie the stock. Oh, don't use your wife's old stockings, obviously. Tie the stock. Tie, put the hops in the stockings. Then chuck that into the beer. Otherwise, at the end, you've got a fuck about sieving the hops away from your beer. And it's not easy. I've tried it. It's not easy. I learnt my lesson. Yeah, no. You don't, yeah, you want to be using fresh stockings or tights. Yeah, we won't go any further than that department. <laughs> yeah, it is a shame about the Saddlers. I mean, I went there last year to their brewery tour. Amazing brewery tour. The lad who did the brewery tour. I mean, youngish lad in his 20s. So knowledgeable. And you knew, you know he had a real, his interest levels for his job were out through the roof. And everybody that was there was listening intently to every word he said. So bloody interesting. And it's sad when firms you do what they do. And apparently Sadlers are still at that site. But they're not doing the, um, the, the, the bar that was there is closed down. Which is a shame because it was a cracking bar. The food was lovely. And a couple of free pints. Sadly, the shop wasn't open when I went, but can't win them all, I suppose. Whew, they might miss the last. Go up the arse and see what my wife has to say. No red cards. Yes, they do. Halewood. Halewood owned Krabby's, Saddler's, and Hawkshead. Hawkshead, who at the start of lockdown, sacked their head brewer. Uh, finance and so many other people, which was um, a bit naughty, shall we say? That's definitely the bad cat. Yeah, they're quite a few parts of the evil dog, they're all on there somewhere. I missed that bit about Hook said then. 
sometimes, you know, with companies, it's better to stay independent. I know, I, I'm gutted about the Christmas pudding style. You know, if I was going to recommend a beer to anyone, a Christmas beer, it is one of them that I would put head and shoulders above most other Christmas beers. And for them to drop it down to 4.5 is disgusting. I'd love to ask why they did it. I mean, I know duty is the reason, but charge more, fuck's sakes. You know, you can get Old Tom for £1.85, uh, you know, and that's 8.5%. So why drop it? Unless it's all about money, you know, lowering the content, but keeping the same price so you earn extra profit. But if you lower the, if the beer is not the same, you're not going to earn the profit because people won't buy it in the end. Some decisions, you do wonder why they make these decisions, you know. Oh, a lady doesn't like beer. That's interesting. Um, Badger, Badger beers used to do Golden Glory, which was a peach and melon beer. <clears throat> I would say go for something like a lager. Jubel make a peach lager beer and that is unbelievable. That is a very good step onto, onto beers. It's difficult because these days a lot of women love their craft beers. More so than blokes. There's a lot of women who brew beer these days. and uh, But uh, getting on the ladders, very interesting. Like with wine, you have to start with... With wine, you'll start with rosé, then move on to white, and then move on to red. With beers, I... Mrs. Raggy, she, she likes Baileys. She likes vodka mud shakes. You can't get them. She likes Baileys chocolate latte. You can't get them anymore. Don't they? Shit. They've really knackered that range up. 8.7%. Ooh. See, I'm a tight bleeder. I don't like paying out silly amounts for beers, but then again, I did pay 40 quid for a 67 percenter. So, you know. Wow, there's some great beers out there, isn't there? Oof. I better neck this and back up the house. Wife are bigger me the bollocking. It's not worth the hassle. Case of eights. Ooh. Six PM tomorrow, definitely. Yeah, we're not going out tomorrow night. But you can't anyway, can you? You can't go to the pub. You can't go to a restaurant. We've done the shopping. We can't go to our daughters. <laughs> so, what do you do? Sit at home watching TV. Although we are going to put the Christmas decorations up tomorrow, but she's sorting the front room out because I've got two gardens to do. So, um, I should be back home about two o'clock. Do the gar, do a load of the decorations. Come down the bare room for an hour. Jobs are good and hopefully, you know, sleeping sleeping's an issue. When I'm pissed I can sleep. Then I wake up, can't sleep. This morning, woke up at like just after four o'clock. And you know, because your body clock is used to waking up every day at a certain time, you can't get out of that bloody Yeah, I look like her in pocket money. Right anyway, thank you everyone for the chat. Um, it's been a lovely night and uh, virtual beer rooms it's good isn't it, it's nice and it's good that everyone's it's good that we're all giving each other a bit of information I've seen some of the the more I drink the less I sleep <sighs> Ooh, depends how much you're drinking ok, see you all tomorrow cheers and uh, I'll try not to get a bollocking thanks a lot, see you later